Today we are checking out AMD's new APUs. This is the Ryzen 5 8600G as well as the Ryzen 7 8700G. Now one is a six core 12 thread coming in at around $229 and the Ryzen 7 version is an eight core 16 thread with actually having roughly 50% more shading units on that GPU portion and that's gonna cost about $100 us dollars more however how does it perform in games today we are testing this on a b650 pro rs motherboard from asrock now there it seems to be a little bit of confusion out there about the default speeds on the infinity clock and also what ram you should use amd suggested i use 2400 on the infinity clock and then coupled in with 6400 on the ddr5 memory now on the 8600G, this unfortunately crashed and didn't work. I had to do that at 2200 megahertz on Infinity and then 6200 on the memory. However, this configuration did work on the Ryzen 7 8700G. But you may be wondering what I am doing right now. I'm actually recording the gameplay footage on a GTX 1060's encoder because these APUs, they don't have a dedicated encoding solution. But we'll go through all the gaming benchmarks, all the ups and downs of these APUs in today's video for you. So let's get right into it right after today's video sponsor. Never pay full price for Windows 10 or 11 again. With today's video sponsor, SCD Keys, you can get activated for as little as $15 using that coupon BFTYC. Links in the description below. Welcome back to Tech Yes City, and we have now finished recording all the footage for the side-by-side -side comparison where we'll start off with Fortnite because that's probably the best case scenario for the APUs here. We're comparing against the GTX 1060 as well as a 1650 Super. You can see that there's a bit of FPS gap between these APUs and also the older GPUs. And when we look at the progress that's been made on these APUs, however, it's a lot better than what Intel's offering on their mainstream desktop CPUs. And looking at the next game here, Baldur's Gate 3, there's about a 25% difference between the 1060 and the 8700G. And this is where the best case scenarios stop after this title here, where if we move on now to Apex Legends, there is a huge difference between the 80. Uh, 600G, the 8700G, and also the GTX 1060. And in fact, the 6500 XT, if you guys remember, I reviewed that. That was really janky in Apex Legends, sometimes pausing in that game. But when we look at the 8700G, it doesn't suffer from that, but the FPS is significantly low compared to a dedicated GPU in this game. Moving on now to Dota 2, a game that I play personally quite a bit, and there is quite a large gap here in the FPS numbers. Now, I tested out the GTX 1060 on a 7700K for this comparison, and we'll get onto the power consumption numbers after these side-by-side -side comparisons, as well as throwing up the graphs, and also the 1650 Super that is faster than the 1060 in this title too. But moving on now to CS2 on high settings, 1080p, so the other games were on low settings, but CS2 I decided to test on high settings, and here's where there is quite a big difference between the APUs and also the 1060. Now, the 8700G, it does have, again, as we said in the intro, 768 shader units of RDNA 3, and the 8600G has 512, but the difference isn't as big as 50% between these two APUs as opposed to the shading units. And that's probably due to the fact that we are using DDR5 memory for the APUs. That's where it's sort of using, utilizing its VRAM on this particular gaming benchmark. Now, continuing on with the power consumption numbers, here's where the 8600G, I found it used about 116 watts gaming in Dota 2 versus say a 7700K system, which went up to around 180 watts with the GTX 1060, then the 8700G was using about 142 watts. So there is a bit of a gap between the Ryzen 5 and the Ryzen 7. And then if we go over to the Cinebench power consumption numbers, they are 81 watts and then also 120 watts. So the Ryzen 7 does use significantly more power in gaming and Cinebench results. And that's due to the fact that it's got two more cores, four more threads on the Cinebench side. And of course, as we said before, it's got more 
more shading units so it's capable of giving more fps in games and that coupled together does give a higher power consumption number in both gaming and cinebench then on the idle power consumption results this is a little bit weird because the b650 pro rs and this whole combination here it was using around 65 watts on idle and so that is higher than our 7700K system. And I would just guess here that this would be with the AM5 desktop unit. As we've seen this kind of APU design go in those newer, say Steam Decks and things like that with great power consumption numbers. And so the desktop unit here, especially on the idle side, I was expecting a little bit better efficiency, especially just on the desktop in Windows 10. The scores are pretty good for the Ryzen 5, as well as the Ryzen 7, where we've got 12 and a half thousand on the Ryzen 5, then about close to 17,000 on the 8700G. So it does clock a little bit higher, but you've also got those two cores and four threads doing a bit more work. Now these are Zen 4 cores going into these APU units. However, there is a lot less cache available on level one, level two, and level three, especially if we were to compare say an 8600G Ryzen 5 versus say a Ryzen 5 7600. And then moving on to 7-zip, the productivity numbers are pretty good on the CPU side. The last benchmark here is Adobe. We'll throw up, this is a special request from Marco. He wanted to check out the video encoding capabilities of these GPUs. Now, when it comes to raw performance, unfortunately, it's not that great of a unit if you just use the APU by itself. And that again has to do with the fact that it doesn't have a dedicated encoder built onto it. And so that's why I had to use that GPU for recording the footage from the Nvidia side to give you guys a side-by-side -side comparisons. But also that is a big factor if you're doing any sort of productivity uh, related work when it comes to video editing. I would prefer to have a dedicated encoder which you don't get on the APUs. Another factor here is, is that you get the Wraith Stealth with the Ryzen 5 8600G. This is an aluminium base as well, and it doesn't do a great job on cooling performance. And then on the 8700G, they give you a Wraith Spire, so it's a little bit bigger. It does do better in the cooling performance results. However, it is a little bit of a shame to see such cheap coolers going in with these price tags on these APUs. I would have loved to have seen the Wraith Prism, for example, come and make its way back on the 8700G. And personally, I would have liked to see the Ryzen 5 carry the Wraith Spire as the Wraith Stealth with that aluminium base really isn't doing anything for me personally when it comes to cooling performance. But now with those numbers all out of the way, it's time to move on now to a recommendation and conclusion with the 8600G and the 8700G. And my thoughts personally is that the best case scenario for getting one of these APUs would be in a real small form factor PC, say like an ASRock Desk Mini, where you've got no dedicated GPU. I think that's where they're going to shine in terms of a little lightweight, really small gaming box that you can take wherever you want with you. However, those idle power consumptions do make it a little bit lackluster in that regard, because I would have liked to have seen them a lot lower on the desktop, for instance, because I have had people say, look, I wanna get like a solar outfit on my car and then maybe get my Starlink subscription service working and play games while I'm out and about and if I'm camping or whatnot. And I think the APUs would do a good job there. However, you'd have to just turn your computer on and off just when you're gaming and when you're not because then you would just be using up a bit of that precious power while you're on the go with those quite high idle power consumption results. However, that aside, it is impressive to see such a big performance uptick on the APUs. I just think in terms of value, however, at $229, the Ryzen 5 8600G would be the one to get just because it's 100 US dollars cheaper than the Ryzen 7 8700G. However, that being said, if you look at what we've used in today's comparison, the 1066 gigabyte, I picked that up for 60 US dollars, the 1650 Super, even less. And so those dedicated used GPU options also carry dedicated encoders, and they're a lot better in terms of value for money and of course performance when it comes to dedicated gaming. Now, the last argument out there is going to be the upgrader who wants to get on a more future-proof platform and then just put in an APU for now, and then maybe in the future they can get a better dedicated GPU when their budget affords it. And of course that person is going to be quite happy with say the Ryzen 5 8600G where they can later on say get a 6700 XT, put that in and get a lot better frame rates 
when it comes to gaming. And so there's that option there as well. I just think in terms of raw value for money, I would have liked to have seen maybe the Ryzen 5 8600G come in at a cheaper price tag under 200 US with a better cooler. They're coming out of this review, the Ryzen 5 8600G and 8700G, they're a good boost for APU performance, but I think the value themselves is going to benefit someone who has a special use case scenario for them. And I think in 2024, all the new products coming out at this point in time have just been right around mediocre. They haven't impressed me that much. And I'm looking at both Nvidia and now AMD's products, but at the same time, they're not complete crap either. And so I would like to personally see some hard hitting value come out of both AMD and Nvidia especially into 2024, but we haven't really seen that yet. But the Ryzen 5 8600G for what it's worth, it's a decent six core 12 thread with a GPU portion on it that will play games at 1080p low settings. The 8700G, of course, if you want that more performance, you'll be paying another $100 for it. But at that stage, when you go to 330 US, you can pretty much, at least the Tech F City, I can build a whole PC for that, which will give you better FPS, definitely. And then of course with the 8700G, you have to go to your DDR5 memory, you have to go get a motherboard and all the other costs associated with building a PC up. So really it is what it is with this review. I hope you guys enjoyed it. My recommendation would be if you've got that special use case scenario, you're definitely gonna benefit from the APUs. But other than that, if you're looking for pure uh, value for the dollar when it comes to gaming and even productivity there are better options out there both on the new and the used market i think on the new side if you got a budget i3 for example brand new around a hundred dollars or less and then you just even got amd's own 6500 xt with no encoder you'd still have a faster outfit than these apus and a significantly faster outfit that would give you more performance. And so that's the crux right there on the new side. And then on the used side, we've got say an i7-4770K uh, Optiplex build with a $60 used GTX 1060. And so you're going to get actually a lot better value for money and more FPS out of the used side too. But for what it's worth, decent products, they just haven't impressed me a whole lot. And so I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. Also let us know in the comments section below, what are your thoughts on these new APUs? Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.